As the country marks the one-year Enyobeni uh, tragedy anniversary, the Gauteng government is worried about the rapid growth of illegal liquor businesses in townships. Economic MEC Tasni Mutara was addressing the liquor board. This is the Gauteng Liquor Board and alcohol traders in Rudaput on the West Rand, adding that illegal establishments were breeding crime and violence. Tepo Mongwa is our SABC News Economics Editor and joins us now to discuss. Tepo, good evening to you and welcome. The GRB inundated with applications. Is this possibly one of the reasons why some of these owners are going rogue? Well, uh, we are told that there are about uh, 50,000 illegal um, uh, liquor traders. Uh, and that's a, a huge number. And many of them are operating with what is called permits. Uh, and they are looking for licenses, and that has not been easy uh, in obtaining those those uh, licenses, and they continue to be raided. But then the issue is, um, I, I, I can make an example with the, the taxi industry, for example. We know yeah. that the Department of Transport is not issuing uh, taxi permits, and they've not been doing that for some time. We know uh, probably uh, the same thing is also being applied here in terms of uh, liquor licenses. The fact that you have so a lot of Number, yeah. big number of uh, traders currently who are trading illegally who want to uh, uh, obtain licenses and are not able to do so, um, it begs the question that surely there is uh, some uh, intention because one could argue uh, because of concentration in the market. If you look at the proximity of many of these taverns and shebeens, uh, it's right next to each other. Uh, and at times there is conflicts between you know, some of these operators uh, and many of them are being established not far from uh, the existing ones. All right, so that's probably you know, where what Motara referred to as the breeding ground for violence uh, and crime uh, probably comes from in part. But here's the other issue. There seems to be little legal compliance, as you're saying, but thousands of these mushroom mushrooming up. It shouldn't be hard to enforce the lack of in uh, compliance. So why is it not happening? Everybody knows where the tavern is, you know, you put a, a, a good foot detective on the ground, you'd probably be able to find, you know, quite a few of these in, 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 in a matter of an hour. Why, what is leading to the lack of enforcement? Well, it's, it's livelihood, one, and number two, as I indicated, is because those people have come forward and are approaching government and say, please, we want to comply. Uh, give us the right licenses. We think, come and look at our uh, establishment, and we think, you know, we, we, are, we are complying. But yet, you have others that are mushrooming that perhaps are not uh, perhaps not complying but the other issue is um, that has been raised is the Houghton liquor board whether it's got the enough inspectors to ensure that there is uh, compliance the issue of capacity to 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 ensure that uh, indeed those people uh, know what they are doing they understand the rules and they comply with that uh, so that has been another uh, gap in the in 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 the system uh, and and currently we know that uh, the Houghton liquor board is actually receiving a lot. I mean, for example, they said that immediately when um, COVID-19 relaxations were, uh, uh, you know, implemented, they received over 2,000 uh, new applications and they could only approve just over 1,000. Uh, and many are still in, in, the, in, the, in the wings waiting. Uh, those who are fortunate are big establishment because they can go to court and, and ensure that they compel or force mm. the Houghton Liquor Board to issue them with their trading license. And, and that's another big a bone of contention because many of the small establishments they are actually complaining and saying that uh, with very limited and small market that they're operating and many of them being established you have big uh, retailers that are being established I mean if you think of any uh, uh, retail mm. chain they have a, a liquor trader attached to it that are actually taking away the market that means that the opportunity that they have is only when those well established businesses are closed then they start to make a little bit of money at night and that's why they want to uh, operate until early in the morning yeah. because that's when they make money. Tepo, as you're speaking, you know, the causes are many as to why there might not be, you know, legitimate businesses who are just looking for, author, you know, authentication or for licensing and they have, you know, potentially good establishments. Under that veil, you've got all of these others, as you say, who could be operating, uh, you know, in, in completely sort of illegal ways. There are a multitude of causation factors as to why these illegal establishments are, are, are springing up. And there are also multiple consequences for what happens in society. We'll certainly try and get the Gauteng Liquor Board on to come and talk about this. But here's the thing, it's a historical issue. 
We have been here, and I kind of almost feel these echoes of conversations that we've had over the last many years asking the same question. Yeah, it, it's, it's a long-standing issue when the uh, Lika Act, the Gauteng Lika Act was promulgated, I think it was in 2003, it was, you know, there was quite, you know, confidence that it will address some of this issue. But currently, uh, I think this issue has been raised, is that each province is doing its own thing. Uh, there is no uh, universal rule. Of course, you've got an overarching uh, National Lika Act as a guiding principle, but then uh, there is no conformity, there's no uniformity. Um, each and every province is doing its own thing, um, and they, they are battling with, with regulating this particular sector. And, and it's very, very clear that you have serious non-compliance. And uh, like I made an example of the taxi industry, you don't issue permits, uh, but you still are seeing a lot of taxi operators without permit operating. So similarly, even, even with the, the liquor industry, you don't issue a, a license, people are sitting with permits that you know, are invalid, but you don't, you know, you're mm -hmm. still seeing a lot of uh, new yeah. businesses mushrooming and, and, and then many of them are, are, are adding to the numbers. And the problem is, uh, it's not like we need more of this business. We, I'm sure we have enough of them. We've got a moral issue. We've got uh, people who are abusing alcohol. And I think that's another question that really needs to be addressed as much as it's a livelihood. Yeah. We need to strike a balance and we're not able to do that. Well, certainly in the public interest, we will continue to have those discussions. Uh, Tepo, again, thank you on this really grim and tragic anniversary, reminding us just even from a provincial perspective what some of the big uh, issues are. Tepo Mongwai is our SABC News Economics Editor.